for the kind introduction. Uh, before I proceed in my presentation, I would like to thank ADSS, uh, CERCA, for giving me this opportunity to present the findings of, uh, uh, actually a, a part of the findings of my uh, study, uh, which is focused on uh, factors associated with the effects of flood risks in rice farming communities of uh, Potota province of Iliilo. Um, so that we be guided by the things that we will be discussing this afternoon. Uh, the following are the outline. So first, a little backgrounder of what the study is all about. And then uh, we shall proceed with a statement of the problem and the objectives. Uh, a little review of literature, literature as well as some theoretical and of course the analytical framework. And then uh, uh, the hypothesis. And then this will be followed by the methodology uh, where I'll uh, present to you the locale of the study uh, as well as the respondents, the research design, uh, sample and sampling techniques, uh, the data source and data collection scheme, unit of analysis, and of course the analysis of the data. And then um, I will proceed with the results and the discussions uh, to be followed by the conclusion, implications, and of course, the, some recommendations. Uh, I am only highlighting some of uh, the variables that I am including in this presentation this afternoon because, of course, uh, uh, time is not on my side to be able to present all of the variables that I have considered. Uh, so to start with, um, of course we are all familiar that uh, flood hazards in the Philippines is uh, rampant or is uh, subject, is uh, taking place. Uh, considering that the Philippines is, um, is, is located on a typhoon belt on the western north Pacific Basin. So it's actually our location and our uh, natural attributes that makes us prone to natural disasters. And in terms of tropical cyclones, uh, at, at average, there are uh, 20 events per year. Uh, considering the uh, data that I was able to get in 2008, considering the case study that I, had, that I considered, uh, from the uh, image data of Makassar in the year 2008, uh, there were actually 21 uh, Tropical, tropical tra uh, cyclone tracks wherein uh, I, I will focus the case of my study in one of the typhoons that struck the province of Iloilo. Actually, it's not only the province of Iloilo, but uh, the whole of Western Visayas in June 2008. Uh, international name Typhoon Fengsen or in the Philippines Typhoon Frank. In the past years, uh, particularly in the year 2000 and even today, uh, the Philippines has become very prone to uh, disasters, particularly floods and flooding. Uh, my emphasis is on Typhoon Frank, but of course, uh, we have all witnessed uh, destructive floods that have hit Manila, Northern Luzon, uh, specifically on Doi and Pepe. Uh, in the year 2009, I think after Typhoon Frank struck the province of Lila and Western Visayas. And of course, uh, when we're talking about floods and flooding, there will, all be, there will always be threats uh, as regards the impacts of floods and flooding, uh, particularly to damage of uh, property, uh, threats of human life, and eventually, of course, uh, uh, losses of human lives. And uh, these are, of course, influenced by many factors, uh, among them, topography, of course, I mentioned a while ago, uh, the location of the Philippines, which is uh, always prone to typhoon, uh, our vegetation and soils, our river, river alteration, our land use, uh, urbanization, as well as other anthropogenic uh, activities, uh, such as our deforestation, uh, as well as encroachments of those living near riverines. Uh, however, when we are talking about impacts of floods and flooding, they are not always negative uh, because uh, for some people, uh, they also consider 
floods and flooding to have a positive impact. They impact, I'm sorry. Uh, among them is to irrigate and fertilize fields, uh, flush out salts and toxins from soils and water courses, and uh, recharge reservoirs. Uh, and at the same time, it could also be a source of livelihood and source of income for some people, like uh, the use of their bankas uh, to uh, transport people from one, look, from one place to another. Uh, however, as I mentioned earlier, um, our bias would be on the negative impacts of floods and flooding, uh, particularly devastation to human life and, of course, uh, livelihood. Uh, as regards episodic or catastrophic floods, uh, it drowns people and livestock, it sweeps away bridges, vehicles, and buildings, and forces survivors to abandon their homes and farms. Uh, so that is why its impact is not only uh, social, but as well as economic, and as well as environmental. Uh, so the case in focus is Typhoon Fengzhen, as what I mentioned earlier. Uh, here in the Philippines, we call it Typhoon Frog, uh, which took place in June, 20, in June 21, uh, 2008. Uh, these are some of the background. Uh, there were 50 provinces across 50 regions and more than 900 persons who passed away because there was actually one ship that, that, that sank. But later on, my focus is on the province of Filipino. Uh, this affected more than 900,000 families or 4 million persons in 6,377 barangays of 419 municipalities. And of course, the sinking of a ferry where it was reported that there were 557 uh, deaths with at least 827 injured and 87 missing. Uh, so the focus of my study was on the uh, effects of Typhoon Frank in the province of Iloilo. So uh, in June 21, 2008, Iloilo was, was uh, one of the worst hit provinces of uh, Region 6, wherein uh, uh, approximately 1.21 billion pesos uh, was lost in terms of government structures, in uh, government infrastructures, uh, agriculture, as well as uh, properties. Uh, it also affected the uh, 612,071 population of the province uh, and it took away 135 lives in Iloilo. Uh, so given this background of the study, uh, we can see that people are always uh, prone uh, to the effects, to the adverse effects or negative effects of floods. That is why they remain vulnerable. Uh, however, however, uh, despite the vulnerabilities of people, uh, people are still in the communities specifically are still able to manifest uh, certain forms of uh, mechanisms for them to be able to survive or to cope with uh, uh, these impacts of floods and flooding. Uh, and at the same time, we have also heard of uh, many mitigate, mitigating measures uh, for us to be able to protect ourselves to protect our communities from these impacts, uh, particularly focus on disaster risk management. Uh, so that's why uh, in the year 2010, I think there is the Act of uh, uh, Disaster Risk Reduction and Management, uh, not, not, not only focused on uh, national, uh, natural uh, disaster, uh, but as well as how this could be reduced as well. Uh, so what is the very simple research gap that I will be highlighting this afternoon uh, is to simplify out some of these factors, uh, particularly the demographic, social economic, uh, social psychological, and uh, response coping mechanisms that are associated with the, the serious effects of flood risks in selected rice farming communities. Um, so the following are questions that I would like to answer, right? I tried to answer what are the demographic, social economic, and social psychological factors that are associated with the serious effects of flood risks. And what are their response coping mechanisms? So these are the variables uh, that I would be uh, highlighting this afternoon, uh, besides those that I included in my uh, paper, in my dissertation. Uh, generally, this is to analyze factors associated with the serious effects of flood risks in selected rice farming communities. 
uh, specifically to describe the demographic, socioeconomic, and social psychological factors among rice farming households and communities uh, seriously affected by flood risks. Uh, second, it's to determine their response coping mechanisms uh, to serious effects of flood risks. And third is to examine the, the relationships of the demographic, socioeconomic, uh, social psychological factors and response coping mechanisms with the uh, serious effects of flood risks. Uh, these are some of the uh, review of literature that I consider uh, where I try to anchor my, my study. Uh, so in terms of flood risks, um, for these uh, references and authors, um, they would now associate flood risks with climate change. And uh, climate change and flooding, as well as its impact. Another literature that I, that I considered uh, is the concept of vulnerability, uh, specifically social vulnerability and flooding, uh, as well as uh, vulnerability to flooding, um, which has diverse impacts that are not only social, but as well as economic uh, and environmental. Uh, as, as what Adger and Douglas would say, uh, vulnerability to flooding would promote uh, poverty as its social product. And then of course, when people are vulnerable, uh, they are also capable of uh, coping, and people can cope uh, considering their resources, their rights, their assets, as well as the intervention of uh, the local services that we have, that we receive from uh, local government units. Uh, I also consider community participation, uh, wherein uh, there is also importance in information sharing, consultation, decision making, and initiating action. Uh, social capital as well, uh, focus on human interactions uh, through reciprocation and trust, and so social index, and others. Uh, attitudes and perceptions as well. And then of course, uh, another theory that I consider uh, would have to do with the relationship of vulnerability wherein uh, when, when people are vulnerable, uh, they are also capable of uh, manifesting coping uh, capacities. Uh, so here in this theory, it points out that the vulnerability generates or, or uh, is, is generated by multiple factors and processes. And these are inherent social and economic process of marginalization and inequalities in addressing this, and that there is a need to address uh, these vulnerabilities. And then, of course, uh, the theory also proceeds that uh, vulnerability determines adaptive capacity. Uh, I also consider recent action theory. You know, there are three constructs, uh, behavioral intention, attitude, and subjective norm, wherein uh, when there are uh, attitudes of persons, uh, and their behavioral intention, they are able to manifest, uh, or, or when there are uh, behaviors of people, as well as subjective norms, uh, people are able to manifest uh, a certain uh, behavioral intention. And then of course I also mentioned social capital wealth, uh, particularly focused on social networks, uh, trust, social norms, and others. Uh, so I try to modify my analytical framework uh, that simply uh, will be highlighted this afternoon. So the demographic and socioeconomic factors, and the social psychological uh, behavior, behaviors, and as well as the response coping mechanisms associated with the serious effects of flood risks. So I came up with uh, two research hypotheses uh, that the demographic, socioeconomic, and social psychological factors uh, such as their perception, attitudes, uh, perception of community participation and social capital of the household and community levels are associated with the serious effects of flood risks. And at the same time, uh, when they're able to manifest certain forms of response coping mechanisms, uh, perhaps they could also be associated with the serious effects of flood risks. Uh, so I now proceed with the methodology this is a very simple presentation of the locale of the study. 
uh, let me bring it to the province of uh, Iloilo. It is found in the island of Panay uh, in Western Visayas, Region 6. It's actually in the very heart of the Philippines. And then uh, I consider uh, one municipality is the municipality of uh, Pototan. Uh, since Pototan is considered as the top rice producing town in the province of Iloilo. And it is also considered as the rice granary of, the, of Panay. And uh, as noted in their, uh, in their history, they claim that it has produced many outstanding farmers. And the choice of the municipality was actually pre-identified uh, because in the record of the PDCC as well as, uh, as, well as the uh, Department of Agriculture in the province of Iloilo, uh, the municipality of Totota was severely affected, was the severely affected municipality by Typhoon Frank in terms of uh, in terms of damage to properties, damage to uh, rice farms and others. Here it also affected 50 barangays and 90% of its entire population. Uh, there are actually two major tributaries that uh, resulted into this uh, flooding of uh, the municipality of Potota, which are the Halaur and Suwaki rivers. Uh, according to the PDCC, MDCC, and the Department of Agriculture, damage the rice crops of the rock was at around 25%. In relation to the data that was also provided by the MPCC, the DAD, is WD, the municipality of Potota, as well as the local Department of Agriculture, um, we were also able to identify, pre-identify three severely affected uh, barangays. Uh, these are Barangay Lumbo, Barangay Kibongan, and Barangay Tura. And later on, uh, we will find out why they were considered as pre-identified barangays severely affected by Typhoon Frank. Uh, so there were 248 respondents surveyed using questionnaires. Um, it's also, I also used some quantitative, uh, qualitative methodologies wherein there were key formats uh, there were also uh, community meetings conducted as well as focus group discussions. Uh, so we had to transect uh, maps because uh, we could not have access to uh, the, the maps of the barangay. Uh, so we had transects and we were able to come up with a sketch map. So here we have Barangay Lumbo and uh, there are actually uh, three tributaries uh, to floods and flood risks in this barangay. Uh, one of them is the major river Suwake uh, and uh, the two creeks. And then uh, the second barangay is Barangay Kibongan. Uh, there are uh, two major tributaries. Uh, we have the Halao River and the Suwake River and they're actually converging in the middle of the barangay. And uh, the third barangay is already the merging of uh, the Halaor and Suwaki River tributaries that have also contributed to the floods and uh, flooding of Barangay Tugura. Um, so the, the research design that I used was ex post facto because uh, the event has already taken place. Uh, the data that uh, was gathered was basically based from uh, previous experiences and observations of these of this, uh, respondents, of the respondents. And then uh, in terms of sampling and sampling, sampling technique, uh, so it was uh, pre-identified from uh, secondary data. So that is why uh, um, we consider the, the selection of the barangays and the municipality as purposive as they were uh, severely affected by Typhoon Frank. Uh, other secondary data were also uh, taken from the Department of Agriculture, uh, local government units and agencies, MDCCs, DS DSWD. And then uh, when we were able to come up with a uh, number of households, uh, we used simple, ran simple random sampling, all set at 0.05, a permissible area and confidence level of 95%. 
Uh, so in terms of the unit of analysis, uh, we consider the rice farmers in the community uh, because they were the ones who were uh, considered uh, to be severely affected by the flood risks, by the flood, I mean, in terms of uh, damages to their properties, uh, rice fields, and other sources of livelihood. In terms of analysis of data, uh, I used uh, descriptive statistics, uh, frequencies, percentages, means, ranges, ranks, SDs. And in terms of inferential statistics, uh, to see uh, associations, I used peers of that. And then of course, the use of the SPSS software. Uh, I also mentioned a while ago uh, that there were also uh, qualitative methodologies employed. Uh, in interviews, focus groups, and community meetings. So I now proceed with our results and discussions. Uh, in terms of characteristics of the respondents, uh, there were more male respondents. Uh, and of course, obviously, in our province, uh, those that are engaged in rice farming mostly are, are, are male. And then, uh, 201 were married. In terms of age, ra age range, uh, rice farmers in the province of Iloilo are actually older, are ranging from 51 to 60 years old. Uh, average number of years in school is at around 9.6 9 years, which is equivalent to third year high school. And uh, predominantly in terms of religion, uh, they're Roman Catholics and they're native to the area. Uh, for those who transferred to the municipality, uh, some of their reasons were a settlement after marriage, inheritance, and obesity. In terms of household size, uh, more than half had four to six members, while the number of children attending school was around one or two. Uh, in terms of members uh, working in the family, uh, there, there was this. Uh, there was at around one member formally earning or earning a living for the entire family, usually the head of the family. And then for those who are engaged in rice farming, uh, they're actually, or some of them are earning at around 10,000 pesos and below. Uh, so perhaps this could be uh, attributed uh, to ownership because uh, not only at around 25% of these rice farmers own the, own the land at the deal. Uh, average income per cropping is at around 14,613. Uh, and there are only uh, two uh, rice cropping season. Unless, of course, there is good rate, then uh, we have the uh, or the third cropping. Uh, other sources of income. Uh, are also in farming or, or, or also in agriculture such as uh, farming, uh, sugarcane, uh, coconut tobacco, tending vegetable gardens, as well as tending vegetable gardens. So, uh, in terms of their experience of flooding, so all of the respondents that we consider experienced flooding of their rice paddies and households. And in 2008, majority of them experienced flooding uh, at around two to three days. However, average was four days. And uh, when, when they maturized and their paddies were flooded, they would immediately visit their rice farms, assess the damage, and uh, there, there were actually technicians who were also assigned to their paradise, uh, where I was able to uh, uh, gain access uh, to the barangay officials uh, from these uh, technicians from the Department of Agriculture. And then, uh, how they were able to recover from flood risks? Uh, these are uh, some of, some of uh, their answers that were highlighted. They said that they have to be prepared. They have to use rice varieties that are flood resistant. They have to work hard again. And of course, have faith in themselves. A majority had access to public health services and they perceived it to be very important because there is, there is actually a, a medical set up, a provincial hospital in the municipality. And then in, in terms of information and technology equipment and information services included, um, 
They, these were uh, materials found in schools and churches, such as bells. And of course, uh, there are ropes that they use in their um, in farming. Uh, verbal or pictorial messages. And uh, there are also broadcast media uh, for those who can afford to buy radio and television. And of course, radio is considered as the most accessible form of media in, the, in these paradise. Uh, in terms of uh, indigenous knowledge, this, these are some of the uh, indigenous knowledge that they identified. Uh, they would normally uh, base it from predictions uh, of coming of heavy rains, uh, verbal messages from one house to another, ringing of bells or cans or metals as warning devices to alarm different members of the community. Uh, there are also rafts and balsa, and these are usually made from uh, bamboo as well as from the trunks of banana. And then they also employed uh, flood, flood proofing. And I noticed that in terms of uh, flood proofing, they would rather elevate their houses. Uh, but of course, for those who can afford to have their uh, houses uh, elevated, they, they, uh, they have it cemented, elevated. And there were also those who said that uh, when there are floods, they would tie their houses on big trees. And of course, uh, as a community, they, they would also watch from the bridges and set markers uh, as regards uh, whether the uh, flood is rising or not, or the water the river is rising or not. And uh, some would, would usually say that they would record uh, the rising of these waters. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, organizations in these three barangays, uh, it, it was it was poor uh, because they only mentioned that uh, there there were some more members of the mountain tigers uh, who would uh, respond when there are uh, when they need to rescue people who are uh, drowning in the floods or when there are some hazards that are uh, taking place in the in these barangays. And then, of course, their uh, association of barangay captains. But in terms of uh, rice farming, uh, in these three barangays, uh, if, if there were organizations before, they were not as active when I already, when I interviewed uh, these different members of the barangays. Uh, in terms of social psychological factors, when the respondents uh, perception regarding safety and protection was uh, asked, they said that this is very important, particularly in terms of the household. And uh, safety and protection members in the household uh, would include teaching family members not to panic, to stay alert and keep themselves informed about the weather. Uh, on the other hand, in the community, uh, perception of safety and protection uh, they perceived was uh, also visible or readily available, such as provision of public information systems. However, uh, when, I, when I tried to really inquire about these public information systems, uh, these, are also, these are only information coming from the barangay, from the local barangay officials. And then of course they also said that uh, when there are uh, such forms of disasters or calamities, uh, there are volunteers. Uh, considering that it's very, uh, these barangays are, barangays are very familistic, uh, they would uh, normally resort, resort to helping the members of their immediate uh, family. And then of course, there are also safe evacuation areas, and uh, predominantly these are the schools, the churches, and the health centers. In terms of attitude during floods and flood risk of the household, uh, they also manifested positive attitude. And this included uh, securing the family's belongings, uh, listening to weather news and information, and of course, uh, moving uh, members of the family to safe areas. Uh, in the community as well, they also found it to be positive <coughs> when officials receive relief assistance and when these are properly facilitated 
and distributed to uh, affected members of the community. Uh, in terms of community participation, concern about flood disasters uh, revealed that they were very concerned and this concern was uh, manifested uh, by listening to the radio about damages brought about by floods. A subjective norm was also strong, wherein they believed that this should not only help members of their immediate family, but as well as extend these uh, services to, to other members of the community. In terms of cost uh, and benefit perception, it was perceived to be high, uh, because participation is costly in terms of time, but beneficial when uh, they are able to uh, survive from calamities when they undergo trainings uh, and uh, drills. Uh, they also reflected strong intention to participate in these activities, uh, to learn and share experiences about uh, disaster prevention and mitigation. Uh, however, in terms of uh, their level of participation, uh, it was only average. Uh, and um, uh, why average? Because they said that most of these uh, times that are supposed to be spent on uh, participation on, on uh, these activities, uh, they would rather spend this time in their livelihoods and in their families. Uh, in terms of social capital, uh, social network is also strong, uh, especially when community members warn each other in times of disasters. Uh, they also reflected cooperative norms that were strong when community members are willing to help each other during flood risks. And uh, when I tried to inquire, they had their own Bayanian system, which they call the Tawili system. So this Tawili system uh, would not incur uh, uh, expenditures from uh, uh, affected uh, members of the community or owners of rice paddies. No? But these are done for free. But for as long as they have them, uh, but for as long as uh, uh, they eat afterwards and they drink afterwards. In terms of trust index, it, it was also strong because they, they manifested reliance on each other. Uh, qualitatively, these were some of the response coping mechanisms that uh, were reflected. Uh, so disaster preparedness, uh, immediate actions and responses, community and family ties, uh, adaptive strategies, uh, local support services, access to loans and credits, and others. Uh, in terms of serious effects of flood risks, uh, in terms of uh, its uh, social effect, it was very high considering that uh, they would perceive the social serious effects to continue to threaten human life, to injure members of their family, uh, spread uh, infectious diseases and epidemics, as well as uh, cause uh, emotional and psychological trauma, and eventually loss of life. Uh, in terms of economic effects, this was also very high, uh, as uh, losses to properties uh, were manifested losses to belongings as well, and income as well as additional uh, costs in recovery. Environmental effect was also very high because of the destruction of their uh, rice crops and other plants, as well as damages to their sources of food and contamination of the sources of their water. Uh, in terms of uh, associations, uh, I only highlighted some of them, age, health services, information and technology services. Uh, so mature uh, rice farmers uh, already have uh, a higher perception of the serious effects of uh, floods and flood risks. While when uh, health services and information and technologies, uh, technology services are not delivered, um, uh, the, the perception of uh, the rice farm farmers uh, also increases or, or the more they are also knowledgeable of the serious effects of floods and flood risks. Uh, in terms of social psychological factors, uh, perception of safety and protection in both households and community level was also found to be associated with serious effects of flood risks. Uh, subjective norms, cost and benefit perception as well. Uh, and cooperative norms and trust index as well. 
Uh, in terms of response coping mechanisms, uh, local support services uh, such as access to relief uh, and, and provision of uh, some materials for recovery were also found to be associated with uh, their perceived uh, serious effects of floods and flood risks. And then uh, when people also have access to loans and credits, when they're able to borrow money for their recovery, uh, the study also showed that it is also associated with their perceived ser serious effects of flood risks. Uh, for my conclusion, uh, first, uh, rice farmers are able to cope uh, when they are prepared, when they respond and act, and act immediately, and when they continue to uh, preserve strong community and family ties. So I think uh, Ilongos are still uh, popular for their being closely knit. So that is why uh, these are also considered as one of uh, the or one of one of their uh, one of the means for them to be able to recover from flood risks. And then the more experience the rice farmers have, the higher is their perception of the serious social, economic, and environmental impacts of flood risks. And then the lack of health information and technology services provided increases perception of the serious social, economic, and environmental impacts of floods and flood risks. And when local support services are provided, uh, like uh, relief operations, uh, materials for recovery coming from the local officials or from other organizations, uh, people are inclined to believe that they are able to temporarily, temporarily provide for the immediate needs of their families, especially in terms of, of recovery. And then uh, in relation to uh, access to loans and credits, when people have money to spend for basic needs, rehabilitation and recovery, the more that people are inclined to believe that they can become more prepared, resilient, and mitigate serious effects of flood risks. And then uh, lastly, in terms of implications and recommendations, uh, one of them is community-based participatory planning and policy that uh, it should not only involve the members of the local government unit or the executive and legislative uh, uh, representatives that we have, but that it should also uh, develop the participation of uh, other stakeholders in the community, particularly uh, those people who are also affected by these flood risks. Okay, so that is why there should be development of mutual understanding and trust and a shared decision-making process and accountability among the different stakeholders. And then, of course, there is also a need for partnership with scientific organizations. Uh, there is a need for uh, local government units and, of course, the community to establish these linkages so that at least uh, uh, they are able to um, um, learn from the different mitigating measures that uh, these different organizations have already been studying, like uh, um, uh, like, like for example, here in Icharca, there are some studies that have already discussed about disaster risk management that perhaps could also be transported to these municipalities and uh, communities. As well as collaborate, collaboration, continued collaboration with social institutions, continued uh, collaboration with the different agencies of uh, the government, the SWD, uh, DA, uh, MPCCs, uh, DOH, and others. And then since there is the requirement for local government units for ecological profiling, uh, I think uh, this will help the local government units to determine uh, the current level of services to its constituents, uh, the resources that are available, the environmental factors which will affect policy and to which policy is expected to bring changes in confronting disasters such as floods and flood risks. Uh, so the ecological profiling is now necessary for uh, local government units for uh, the development of their uh, for for their development plan plans, as well as for their uh, executive and local agenda. And fifth, uh, there is also a need for people in the community uh, to be compliant about ordinances and laws. 
particularly uh, those anthropogenic activities that are uh, uh, that are also related to um, floods and flood risks. That is, uh, this will ensure that constituents of the barangay and the municipality meet ordinances and laws, especially those related to environment, to the environment such as proper waste and garbage disposal, encroachment near riverings or rivers, as well as prohibited or danger zones. Uh, because there were actually people who were uh, living near rivers, uh, so that is why when there are flash floods, uh, eventually, uh, when they do not comply with these ordinances, local go local ordinances and laws, then their lives would be threatened and they would be uh, vulnerable. And of course, further research. Good afternoon, and madam, in kasalaman sa inyo. At this point, I would like to invite our audience to use the microphones around the room. So if there are any questions, comments, or suggestions to Dr. Uh, Professor Enigasan. Any questions, comments, or suggestions from our audience? Regarding Professor Enigasan's presentation on the factors associated with effects of flood risks in rice farming communities in Prabhata and Italy. Any questions? No questions or comments? Okay, so at this, oh yes, Dr. Mega. You have the last number, uh, compliance to rules and regulations. Uh, but uh, that seems to be very important. But would you have some data actually taken from the uh, site that you have selected? There. Uh, there, were, there are actually compliance. Do you have some data or do you have some information from your constituents or from your uh, barangay where uh, you have selected uh, as your? Uh, actually, sir, we only discovered that there were uh, those living near riverines when we conducted our transects. So, based on our observation, uh, we were only we were only able to identify those that we were able to uh, see uh, located near these rivers and riverines. But of course, that is a very good suggestion that we could have a, a baseline data or a data for those that would be violating these ordinances uh, when we go back to the, the locality perhaps uh, a part of uh, our suggestion uh, in partnership with the local government of the municipality of Tototan uh, to address the issue of uh, these encroach encroachments near the riverings uh, actually it's not only near the riverings oh no, it's not only beside the riverbanks but there were also those who were living under the bridges. And uh, they were considered millionaires because the price of their house is a uh, uh, million pesos worth. You know? So perhaps later, it's, it's a very good suggestion that perhaps if we could uh, uh, specifically have a data of these uh, people, then we could perhaps recommend this. Can I have a follow Yes, sir. Uh, in your review of your literature, in relation to uh, compliance and to ordinances, did you find some index or some fatalities in the review of literature? Because uh, I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is that not many sociologists are focusing on this kind of uh, things that uh, once uh, uh, that is always happening in the community, and no one gives an index. But uh, it's just like uh, what is the crime index? Yes then uh, the police can give you that. But in relation to this uh, environment that has uh, laws and compliance, uh, there seems to be, that seems to be missing. I, I think I, I really agree with that, sir, because uh, it's, it's also a very sensitive issue in the, uh, in the local governments that they could hardly uh, have these people encroaching near their river banks. 
as well as in the below the bridges, because uh, politically, uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps they may also have their own political reasons why. Uh, this might be some of their supporters. Uh, secondly, uh, there might also be some problem on how to relocate these people in the uh, in the communities. And of course, I also agree that. It's, it's correct that we should really come up with an index uh, how, how we could address the issue on uh, relocating these people who are remain to be vulnerable uh, to floods and flood risks, especially in the municipalities. <coughs>